Hello everyone and welcome to Nelson Metaphysics, where we elaborate on everyday conversations that people shy away from. Now today, we're going to continue with the 48 Laws of Power, specifically Laws 16 to 20. Now, before we begin, I just want to remind everyone that I'm explaining these laws in its true nature, meaning that I'm not picking any sides. I might like a few, I might dislike a few, but at the end of the day, the whole purpose is to really elaborate on the true nature of each individual law. Now, before we begin, I just want to remind everybody, like the video, subscribe, and keep in tune for every week on new videos, especially on this book. I will be finishing the entire book. Now, Law 16. It's titled this. Use absence to increase respect and honor. And the description to this law reads this. Too much circulation makes the price go down. The more you are seen and heard from, the more common you appear. If you are already established in the group, temporary withdrawal from it will make you more talked about, even more admired. You must learn when to leave, create value through scarcity. Now, this is really good. I like this because this is something that we truly see every day. This is right here. This is everyday life at its purest. A lot of the times we see people that use absence to spark the interest of their appearance. How does that work? For example, you know, you may be part of a set of co-workers that they go out a lot and they gather together. However, you don't join them all the time. So when you do join them, it makes it seem like you're special for some odd reason. Me in particular, a lot of the times I don't go out with my coworkers because they be going out a lot. I just don't feel like keeping up. I'm going to be honest. I'm guilty. But, you know, a lot of the times, it's not just that. That's, just, that's in a social setting. People use that in relationships or when they pursuing a girl, for example. We men will be talking to a girl, give her a full attention, and then all of a sudden, boom, we stop talking to her. Most of the time we do this to women we really don't care about, to be honest. Like if you just do that to somebody, like they're not even our girl if you actually sit down and think about it. So if you sit down and give them some space out of nowhere after talking to them consecutively for a couple of days, they're going to be like, what's wrong with what's going on? Did I say something wrong? Did something happen that I wasn't aware of? Now they're constantly thinking about you. And if that's your goal to have that particular individual, that particular girl, or whoever you're pursuing for, for whatever reason, think about you constantly, then that's the way to go. You give a lot of attention, then you stop. Sporadically, out of nowhere, a hard stop. It might, you might be talking to this person for a couple of weeks, even a month, then you stop for a couple of days or a week or two weeks. And they'll have them thinking like, what's going on? What did I do? What did I say? Those are things you want to keep in mind. People do that a lot. You know, just keep, you know, don't fall for it. If you want to, if you don't want to deal with people that do that, you address that from the very beginning. You let them know, hey, I don't like you doing this. Or I don't like people who do this. So if you do this, just know that I might not respond to you. And if I do, consider yourself lucky. A lot of the times we're not going to play the gamble. Because if you make it out nice and open, if we really truly care about pursuing that person, we're not gonna, you know, ghost you. That's that's basically what happens. We'll ghost them and then we come back, whatever the case may be. I'm guilty. I be ghosting women just because I don't wanna talk to them no more. Or sometimes I'm just too busy and when I see that they get too attached and they're not somebody I like, you know. That happens, you know, like uh, you just want you just decide to forget about them. I mean, it's horrible. It's bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm guilty, you know, but if you're truly interested, like for me, example, when I'm truly interested in somebody, I don't just ghost them unless you get into an argument. That's different. Now, that's space. That's not separating yourself from the situation. When you keep that in mind, you kind of 
understand, okay, if this is really a person that I like, or if, if this is really a person I want to pursue, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, play these games. There's no time for that because you don't want to risk losing the person. That's just how I view it, you know, what I've seen too amongst my friends, peers, and so forth. Me, for example, if I really truly like you, I'm not going to ghost you unless there's a reason why I got to disappear. You know, sometimes we have our valid reasons. But however, most of the time, you know, we keep it 100. We, we do what we got to do and we call it a day. Um, this particular law to increase respect and honor in a, you know, in a business setting, you don't just disappear. You don't use absence because you always want to be part of every meeting. You want to know what's going on. You want to be up to date. You don't want to miss anything. So please do not confuse this law and do it in a business perspective. It's not going to work out for you. At the end of the day, it's going to make it seem like you don't care. It's going to make it seem like you're not, you know, worried about knowing what's the update of whatever the case may be. It, may, it just makes it seem like, you know, like you're not present. And for business settings, you always want to be present, aware, attentive, know what's going on, and be there. Be visual. People know that, okay, this person is about it. He's He or she is always here. You can't play no games with that person. Because when you use absence, people automatically can, people will automatically assume, oh, this individual or this person right here, they're lacking the knowledge because of their disappearing. That disappearing that you do will make people assume that you really lack certain levels of knowledge just because you weren't there. So just be aware of how you use absence. Now, the reversal to this. As we all know, the reversal is like a mirror image of each law. So over here, it reads this. In love and seduction, similar absence is only effective once you have surrounded the other with your image, been seen by him or her everywhere. Everything must remind your lover of your presence so that when you do choose to be away, the lover will always be thinking about you will always be seeing you in his or her mind's eye. You know, now this reversal basically takes place after you've gained the person. Be careful. You got to make sure that, you know, you're already part of the person's life and you're there and you've been doing your thing with that person, whatever the case may be, and you're able to play that game with them. At the end of the day, obviously, if you're playing these little simple little mind games, you're not, you're not really caring for that person because we adults and we don't got no time to play. I know I don't got no time to play. At my age, everything is a hustle. Everything is getting down to the point, being clear, and understanding what's going on. It ain't no time for, oh, me disappearing. Now I got to talk about, oh, why are you disappearing? What's going on? Why are you doing this? I don't I don't got time for that. I don't. If I'm busy, I'm busy. I'll let you know I'm busy. And if you don't understand, you got to go. Because we don't got time for this. Same thing for, you know, vice versa with the person I'm dealing with. If they're busy, I'm going to respect it. I'm going to honor it. If I don't hear it from you the whole day, we adults. I don't hear from you the whole day, period. I'm not going to get in my feelings like, oh, what you was doing? What's going on? We don't got time for them toxic games. We don't got time for a whole bunch of extra crap. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you're going to use this tactic, make sure you don't use it on someone that you truly care about. That's my biggest word of personal advice. You guys see the true nature of the law? Just use it wisely. Don't, or if you already see people, utilizing the law you know what they're doing so be aware understand and move accordingly next law law 17 
Keep others in suspended terror. Cultivate an air of unpredictability. That's the title of the law. And it defines this. Humans are creatures of habit with an instatable need to see familiarity in other people's actions. Your predictability gives them a sense of control. Turn the tables, be deliberately unpredictable. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Deliberately. You get the point. Behavior that seems to have no consistency or purpose will keep them off balance and they will wear themselves out trying to explain your moves. Take Taken to an extreme, this strategy can intimidate and terrorize. Now, there's something that we have to keep in mind in trying to understand this law. When you being unpredictable, you're not just is not we're not talking about simplistic unpredictability. No, we're talking about extreme unpredictability. Like people know you're the kind of person that, oh, this person will do this for sure. This person will make this happen. This person will do a drastic change. They'll jump out of a plane. They'll go to the military. They'll know that you are that person that is filled with extreme unpredictability. Now, when you are that person that is willing to react whenever and however, some people fear that. And if you choose to put fear in people's minds, even though it's just 5% fear, but if just a little bit of fear, if you choose just to put any sort of kind of fear in someone's mind, you use extreme unpredictability. You, you type of person that could do one thing and switch up crazy to the other. You know, you could be the type of person that, you know, that is obsessive with hobbies. So people know that if you can get into something, you're going to do it right. Like me, for example, I'm the type of person that anything that I do, I do it as best as I possibly can to the absolute most extreme way or tactic or professionalism that I possibly could think of or do, you know. And when you work like that, your name is attached to greatness. That means, okay, wherever this person's name is attached, that means that it's, things are being done correct. They're being done right. They're being done in a way that, you know, I can put trust in whatever that person is part of because I know for a fact that they're going to do it to the most absolute, extreme, and best ability that they can come up with. And that's, that's the way it should be, honestly, when you get into something. Something I recommend you do. If you're going to do something, do it right. If you're going to be in the streets, do it right. If you're going to start a business, do it right. If you're going to invest your time into a woman or a man, do it right. Don't come off playing games. For all of that, y'all could be adults and y'all could do other things. But don't waste anyone's time. You do it right. I'm a firm believer in whatever you do, you come correct. You do what you got to do. You know? And that shows that, okay, this person's really about it. Like, if I care for someone, like, if I, if I really like someone, and I also care for them, I want to do everything in my power to make sure that they understand that I care for them, that they see, that they know. Not, and that's not me proving myself. I don't have to prove myself. My actions, they speak for themselves. Me wanting to spend time with you speaks for itself. Me, for example, wanted to, you know, always communicate with you speaks for itself. Me wanting to, like, just randomly do things for you or make sure you always go speaks for itself. And that's not me being extreme or anything. Honestly, that's just me doing what I'm supposed to do the right way. I'm going to come correct. I'm going to let you know what it is, how it's done, and how it's going to be done. And whatever the case may be that you don't like, you communicate that with me so I can adjust accordingly. Because if I really am well invested in this, I'm going to adjust if I truly care. If I truly care. And that's the reality of things. You just got to come correct with everything that you do. You in a business setting, you come correct. You go into a meeting, you come correct. You show numbers. Numbers don't lie. You give your presentation. 
you come correct. Make sure you look good. If you got to wear a suit, make sure your suit, your shoes, everything impeccable. Your belt on point, not one scratch. Your shoes are shined. Your suit, tailored. Your suit, make sure it's well-pressed. Your shirt, sometimes you got to go out, come out with a brand new shirt when you, when you got a presentation. Just to have that white glow or that blue fresh glow that it came out the pack and you just happened to get it pressed. That's the kind of glow I'm talking about. You come correct. You know, if you have some sort of number system going on because you in the crypto, you come correct. You do your research, know what's going on. So you can move, sell, buy the dip, sell at the top. You know, things like that. Now, the reversal to this. Sometimes predictability can work in your favor. By creating a pattern for people to be familiar and comfortable with, you can lure them to sleep. They have prepared everything according to their preconceived notions about you. You can use this in several ways. First, it sets up a smoke screen, a comfortable from behind which you can carry a deceptive action. Second, it allows you on rare occasions to do something completely against the pattern. Unsettling your opponent so deeply he will fall to the ground without being pushed. You know, when I say use extreme unpredictability, they 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 talking about, you know, faking it till you making it. And I'm not I'm not really like big on that. I'm big on making sure that your actions speak for itself. So the way I would use this. For the first part, I don't got to set up no smoke screen because my actions, they're not deceptive. They're not going to deceive you. My actions is the truth. My actions is facts. So if you have that behind you, you don't got to put a front for anybody. Because when you create a fact, people can't go against that. And whoever goes against that is a liar. Now, the second part. Yes, extreme unpredictability. You will do something outside of the normal pattern. You know, you're gonna unsettle whoever don't like you, whoever envies you. You're gonna be like, damn, why this person, why I can't keep up? You know why? Because you on it. You're doing what you have to do to make sure you prevail, succeed, achieve. And these are the things that you have to keep in mind that sometimes you move different for the sake of the outcome. And that different maneuver is what, what's gonna keep your opponent unsettled unaware, confused. So that concludes Law 17. Law 18. Do not build fortresses to protect yourself Isolation is dangerous. This right here is good. Now, please pay attention. The world is dangerous and enemies are everywhere. Everyone has to protect themselves. A fortress seems the safest, but isolation exposes you to more dangers than it protects you from. It cuts you off from valuable information. It makes you conspicuous and an easy target. Better to circulate among people Find allies, mingle, you are shielded from your enemies by the crowd. Hmm, this is good. This is good. You want to truly understand this. When you're doing something, don't stick to yourself. Don't do things on your own. There's nothing in this world that we truly, truly do on our own. We're always outsourcing somebody. There's always something or someone that's giving us a hand that at the moment we might not really see or understand. And those are things that you just got to keep in mind. Don't stick to yourself. Come out. Find people that think like you, that move like you, that care for you. You know... In earlier laws, I did say trust nobody. But there are people who care for you. 
even if it's temporary love, there is such thing as temporary love and you can use that temporary love to your advantage. There's nothing wrong with utilizing temporary love to your advantage. You know why? Because you're going to reciprocate that love the right way. You're not going to just take, take and take and not give anything back. You got to reciprocate. And there's a, there's a quote from the book that I want to read. And it says this. Because humans are social creatures by nature, power depends on social interaction and circulation. To make yourself powerful, you must place yourself at the center of things. You know, when you isolate yourself and you limit, when I say limit the people around you, like one or two people, you're giving people access to your vulnerability and you never want to give anyone in your life access to anything vulnerable about you because God forbid they go against you they're going to use that against you your own vulnerability it's almost like blackmailing in a way it's completely different but those are tactics people use when they're trying to climb to the top those are tactics people use when they want to manipulate you those are tactics people use when they want to un- get information out of you so you also have to understand what's going on here you know we see people who isolate themselves from the world you know on a personal scale I'm going to talk about people who isolate themselves from the world because they're going through things you know that's just going to put you in a great depression that you don't need as part of your life. You don't want to isolate yourself from things that's going on around you. You confront those things and you go through them because no matter what, whether if it's today, tomorrow, next week, next year, in a couple of years, five years, 10 years, you're going to have to confront those things. Whether it's now or later, take advantage, get it done, work on it, work on yourself. Don't, you know, just stick to yourself as a loner, you know, getting all depressed. And now that becomes your lifestyle. Like, that's not the way to move. That's not how you network. That's not how you build relationships. There's nothing, like, beneficial out of that unless you're taking a space for yourself. Taking a space for yourself and completely isolating yourself as a lifestyle are two different things. It's okay to take a space and a break from everyone. We go through things every day. So at the end of the day, we might go through something and say, hey, I need some time off. And that's fine. You take that time off. But remember, it's temporary. And even though it's temporary, you have to be aware that, hey, you stick around too long, you're going to lose access to information. You're not going to be updated no more. You're not going to understand what's new, what changes are being made, if they benefit you, if they don't benefit you. That's the reason why I say, and I recommend, don't don't be that person that isolates themselves from the world. It ain't good for you. It ain't healthy. It's like, what do you have to gain out of that? Absolutely nothing. Self-preservation, that's what's up. But that's extreme self-preservation. That's extreme, you know, just loneliness. Even though you're doing it on purpose, it's like, it's unnecessary. I know we live in a cold world, but we also have to understand that in a cold world is where we network, build relationships, and utilize those relationships to get where we want to get to in life. So don't get deceived and don't get stuck in a bubble because of a life experience that leaves you stuck. You don't want to be stuck. We want to prevail. We want to prosper. We want to be great. We want to be in control. So take over and be in control of your life, of what you want to do, of what's part of your goal. What's your five-year game plan? Get that done. Get it done. Make it happen. Now the reversal to this. Without keeping an ear on what's what is happening in the streets, you will be unable to protect yourself. About the only thing that constant human contact cannot facilitate is thought. 
The weight of society's pressure to confirm and the lack of distance from other people can make it impossible to think clearly about what exactly is going on around you. As temporary recourse, then isolation can help you to gain perspective. Many, a serious thinker has been produced in prisons where we have nothing to do but think. You know, like I was saying, don't, don't, don't isolate yourself. Don't have that lack of distance. It is not, there's nothing beneficial from that at all. You know, like I said, just take the small space, what you need, you know, because you don't want to make it impossible for you to be able to think clearly. And sometimes when you have lack of information, you cannot think clearly because you can't process certain things that, you know, will help you put the dots together. And those are certain things you have to understand as an individual. Now, moving on, Law 19. Know who you're dealing with. Do not offend the wrong person. And it, and it defines this. There are many different kinds of people in the world. And you can never assume that everyone will react to your strategies in the same way. Deceive or outmaneuver some people and they will spend the rest of their lives seeking revenge. They are wolves and lambs clothing. Choose your victims and open and opponents carefully. Then never offend or deceive the wrong person. Um you have opponents. You have suckers. Suckers are the unaware, the ones that lack knowledge, the middleman some at times. Then you got the victims. The people that got screwed over. The people that went through that negative experience. The people who are no longer competition. They were once opponents. They were once the competition. And they probably became the middleman at one per at one point. Or they went from the, being the competition straight into being a victim. You know. Understand who you are dealing with. Who your competition is. Who is in front of you. You understand? If you're opening up a business and that same line of business is across the street, understand who they are. Do it better. Make better prices. Have better products have a better presentation, but you have competition. Learn your competition. Outmaneuver your competition. Move accordingly with your competition because somebody will become a victim. Somebody will take that L. And do you want it to be you or you want it to be your competition? You got to be wise about that. We live in a hard world. You got to make that decision yourself. You're not going to be able to Sit down with your competition, side to side, have a nice cup of coffee, some wine, you know, and say, hey, it's okay. We'll do business. You will do business and we'll be all right. Nah, they're going to try to get rid of you if they could get rid of you. And you should try to get rid of them if you have the opportunity to get rid of them. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to buy out your competition and then destroy it. You know, that's, you got to, you got to, Move accordingly. You can't just move in a way, you know, we, this is not a loving world we live in. This is not a loving world. In this world exists loving people. And even those kind of people can sometimes be selfish. You got to understand this. The highest form of the art of power is the ability to distinguish the wolves from the lambs, the foxes from the hares, and the hawks from the vultures. Meaning that you can't sit down and feel like, oh, I'm, you know, this is just, I'm only dealing with a dog. And next thing you know, it was really a wolf you was dealing with. They come and finish you. 
because you lack knowledge, you lack preparation, you lack doing your homework. You thought you had it all figured out. Guess what? You're not the only one. And people are going to have you figured out before you get them figured out. So who's going to take the L? You or them? Who's going to come on top? You or them? Somebody's going to be on top. You want to stay behind? You want to lose your investments? You want to lose your money? You're going to take that L? Do your homework. Know what you're doing. Know what you're talking about. Don't be naive. We're not here to be naive. We're here to get things done. We're here to achieve, overcome, be in power, prevail. Never forget that. We're not here to play no games. We're not here to entertain competition. We're here to take over competition and turn that competition into a victim of our success. That's the way you got to maneuver, move, and live life. Live life that way. Sometimes, you know, you got competition where trying to gain our lady. There's a, a nice-looking girl you you know you're talking to, and you know that if you just talking to her, there's a high possible chance that she might be talking to other people. How are you gonna be different? What are you gonna do different? How are you gonna get that person? You may not know your competition, but you know this competition. You know if that girl's not your woman, and you pursuing that woman, nine nine out of ten, there's gonna be competition. And how are you gonna be different? What are you saying to her that's different than the next person? What are you doing for her that's different than the next person? What do you have to offer? What are you gonna do with her? You understand? That's different. How are you gonna spend time with her? Because you're not the only one that trying to pursue her. Women always got people after them, left and right, left and right, left and right. Women are beautiful. Women are one of the most amazing things that God created for this earth. It is a blessing that humanity is not just one whole gender, for example. I'm glad there's different kinds of gender and the way people view their gender and the way people want to pick and choose their gender. I'm glad that that exists. I'm glad we have options. That is a blessing. And for me, a woman is a blessing on earth and we should cherish them. And if you want to cherish someone you're pursuing, you got to do something different because everyone else loves women too. And if you try and get somebody that's high value, guess what? They definitely got a thousand people after them. They definitely do, without a doubt, especially if they're high value. A high-valued woman is hard to come across nowadays. So, guess what? You make sure you do your homework, you do it the right way, you don't lack, you don't do things like, oh, ghost them. You, you, you come correct. You come with clarity. You be that person. You know, you take over, you know, then you, you do your thing afterwards. You have your little lady, you got a good little flow going on. If she's the one, Thank God, you feel me? You're going to leave it at that. You're going to move on. Law 20. I disagree with this law. And it titles this. Do not commit to anyone. Do not commit to absolutely anyone. It is the fool who always rushes to take sides. Do not commit to any side or cause but yourself. By maintaining your independence, you become the master of others. Playing people against one another makes them pursue you. You don't want to pick no sides. You don't want to pick, you don't want to commit to anyone, anything or whatever the case may be. You do things on your own. You don't want to work under anyone. Do, listen, if you, could, if you could start a business and make the same money than sitting down in an office somewhere, you start your business. You don't want to work under anyone if you don't have to. I, you know, I understand there's people who have careers, there's people who are doctors, there's people who are, you know, nurses, lawyers. You're always going to be under somebody. 
You're always going to be under somebody, and that is okay. But if you could get into a line of business, a private practice, you know, private investments, and make the same exact money than working for somebody, you go ahead and you do that. Don't commit to anyone. You know, be in control. We, we over here talking about the 48 laws of power. We talking about taking control. We want to control as much as we can. If we can monopolize, we're going to be a monopoly. If we can take over our competition, we're going to take over. If we're going to overcome obstacles, we're going to get it done. But you also got to understand, you don't want to commit just to anyone. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this for the single people out there. Don't commit to anyone. If you don't really truly know that person, don't commit to anyone. And don't give yourself away to anyone either. Because a lot of the times we won't commit to anyone, but we're giving ourselves away. So when we give ourselves away, it automatically feels like, oh, you know, that person's committed to me because you already gave yourself to them. To them. That's not how it works. You don't just tell people about yourself. You, people want to know about you. You know what you do? You wait until they inquire about you. You wait until they come correct and say, how do you do this? How are you? Tell me about your upbringing. Tell me about your past, your likes, your dislikes, you know, your hobbies. How do you spend your time on a daily basis? How's your work-life balance? When they truly get to know you and you truly get to know them and you find a level of chemistry, that's when you can say, you know what? I am prepared to commit. But don't just commit. Don't commit until you know you've crossed certain check marks that's necessary for you to say, okay, I'm going to commit. And this is the reversal. The game proposed here is delicate and difficult. If you play too many parties against one, another they will see through the maneuver and will gang up on you. If you keep your growing number of suitors waiting too long, you will inspire not desire, but distrust. So, you know, just move accordingly and timely so that you're able to get things done. You know, if you have a certain following, don't don't be don't be naive, you know, make sure you got you get that target market and you sell to your target market because that's your following. Those are the number of people that you were able to gain to get involved in whatever it is that you are trying to get across. So Make sure you keep that trust. You built that trust. If people got to go fight back and forth for you, you do that. That's good. Have people fight for you. Have people fight for the sake of what you have going on. Because you know what that shows? That shows you have some level of value because people are willing to go out of their way for you. You know, and for that being said, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and I'm going to catch you next week. Thank you.